You see, there was a role. God Almighty, we believe, the Quran testifies that God had chosen the Jews, the Bani Israel. The Quran says, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum. So, O children of Israel, remember the special favors which I did unto you. Wa anni faddaltukum al alameen. That I preferred you above all the peoples of the earth for my special favors. He chose you. You say you are a chosen people. I say, yes, you are a chosen people. You say it's in the Bible, I say it's also in the Quran. You are a chosen people. Chosen for what? Because of your race? Because of your language? Because of your riches? No. You were chosen for a purpose. And that purpose is spelled out for you in, in, in your Torah, in the Bible, in the second book of the Bible called Exodus. Moses is made to say, Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. He says, Moses, now therefore, if ye will obey my voice, God is speaking through Moses, if you Jews will obey my voice and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, something special. If you listen to God's voice, listen to his commandments, become right with him, he says, you will be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Quran says, Wa anni faddal al alameen, that I preferred you above all the peoples of the earth for my special favors. For all the earth is mine, says the Lord, and he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's your job. You are supposed to be a kingdom of priests, guide mankind to the knowledge of God. That, that was the role that why God chose you. Now you have done away with that role. You have made your religion a racial religion. All the strife in the world, whatever happened in Germany, whatever happened for the past 2,000 years, is on account of that you have lost that role. You are done away with that role. And if you do not carry out the duties and responsibilities which God had imposed upon you for making you the chosen people, he says, the same God, he says, in your book, in your Torah, in the book of Leviticus, the fourth book of Moses, Chapter 26, verse 18. And after all this, if you do not obey me, God is talking. You Jews, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Seven times more. Anybody else? You commit one crime, one punishment. You Jews, you get seven times more punishment. This is your book. Your book of authority. Your book of God. Your Torah. Verse 21, then if you walk contrary to me and are not willing to obey me, I will bring on you seven times more plagues. Seven times more plagues upon you, the Jews, according to your sins. Verse 28, then I also will walk contrary to you. You walk contrary to me, I will also walk contrary to you in fury. And, e and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. I don't know, when Hitler incinerated six million Jews, whether it was six times or seven times, I don't know. But shh, I said, look, this is according to the promise made by God to your nation. You go contrary to my will, this is the punishment in store for you. And he warns you, he warns the Jews in their own holy book, the own holy Bible, the Old Testament, which is the Bible of the Jews, he warns them. In the last and final will of Moses, the last will and testament of Moses, the book of Deuteronomy, fifth book, chapter 28, verse 68. Moses is speaking. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. You have already come out. After you have come out, in the Sinai, Moses is speaking to the Jews. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, again, with ships, by the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more. Though I told you, look man, I have freed you from Egypt, but he'll bring you back. Notwithstanding, I, I have freed you now from the Egyptian bondage, but I will bring you back into Egypt. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Slaves will be sold as slaves. Your men and your women will be sold as slaves. I'm reading your book. I don't know whether there are any Jews who are listening or whether they'll carry my words to them. 
God says, He says, I, you will be sold a second time, a second bondage. Only once you have been in bondage so far in Egypt. This is the second bondage God is promising the Jews. You'll be sold as born men and born women, slave men and slave women. And no man shall buy you. You'll be such a rubbish that nobody will have you even. Even as slaves, they won't own you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Look, I said, you are set up for all this. This is a setup going on. You are not going to listen. It's right. He gives you rope. He gives you rope. He's given you rope. Go on, go on, as he gave Hitler rope. This mighty Hitler. <laughs> I said, great, in, 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 in terror, in cruelty. His army is marching to Russia 2,000 kilometers nonstop. You know, that man, Hitler, because of him, 40 million people died. The Second World War. But there is hope. There is hope. According to Holy Scriptures, there is hope. There is a chance. You see, every time God Almighty gives people power, position, might, is a test. How you use it. It is destiny or destruction. See, the title would have been too long. Is Israel set up for destiny or destruction? We said destruction. But always, always is destruction goes destiny. He's giving you a chance. And he says, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verses 23 to 25, he says, in that day, a day is coming, in that day, there shall be a highway out of Egypt, a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptians into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt. One third means there is a tripartite, tripartite was it? Three in one nation. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. First time in the Holy Bible is the words expressed for Egypt. Every other time, Egypt, the plagues of Egypt, the filth of Egypt, the whoredoms of Egypt. Everything of the worst things is Egypt for a change. Listen, this God is talking now, the same God, so whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel my inheritance. All together in one brotherhood, serving together. This is what the Christian translation of the Bible says. Serve together. all the Assyria, what is Assyria? Assyria that Isaiah saw in his vision is Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, all that is Assyria. And Egypt, and Palestine, this is all together three in one this is the holy trinity which is a real trinity not the father son and holy ghost here is the trinity unity in trinity serving together gives the impression that serving in the army one armed force can be but no you take the jewish translation of the hebrew scriptures of the old testament the jewish translation i have it printed in america by the jews in that the word is, they shall worship together. Serve means serving God. Worship together. In what? Faith. As a Christians? As Jews? As Jews, if the Jews were going to rule, according to Judaism, they will reject Jesus and they will reject Muhammad. Constant strife. If the Christians were, if Christianity was to prevail and worship together as Christians, the, the Christians will accept the prophets of the Old Testament, probably, and they will reject Muhammad. Strife. Only the Muslims, as Islam that we worship together, the Muslim says he believes in Moses and David and Solomon and Jesus and Muhammad. Only as Muslims can you worship together.